Hello. Uh, Jim. This is Jim. Hey, uh, Dave Cotter. Uh, just we connected via email through Sandy and just uh, mentioned you're doing something on a single family subdivision. So wanted to see if this was a good time to chat. Yeah, yeah, I got a minute. Let's talk. Great. Well, you know, again, just I want to make sure I, th I know I saw in the email, but I just want to make sure this is all correct. So you're uh, Wild Homes is the company mm -hmm. uh, and 555-221-34489. And then I have Jay Cowan at wildhomes.com. And then you're at 2345 East Town Teats Road in Scottsdale 85255. Does that sound correct? That is correct. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so tell me what you're looking to do. Yeah, so we're actually looking for about 25 million in a project. We're working on a single family subdivision deal. Great. Uh, it's a big, uh, big deal. Um, do you know what the loan to cost is you're looking for? Yeah, I believe it's about 75% loan to cost. Okay. Is there anything else on top of that at all? I don't believe so based on our current estimates. Okay, great. And how much cash do you have into the project right now? And, and where did that come from? We do have about 5 million, give okay. or take. Okay, great. Um, and was that just cash that you brought in yourself or was it cash you brought in by an investor? Yeah, so it's my own cash. Okay, yes. great, thank you. Okay, just going back to the listener um, off this, it's really important to note that many times the client has no idea, right? The purchase price um, or the total cost or whatever it is. In this case, he does. So it's just important that you understand, you know, <clears throat> in a construction, situation, who the contractor is, what the budget is, um, if they're under contract, um, because the reason why this is so important is the appraiser needs to get this to get the true value. And if they're guessing and the budget comes in higher, then they might have valuation issues. So if value comes in lower than whatever the total cost is, plus all the budget that they have, then that could be an issue as well. So just make sure to really dive in um, to that budget, uh, understanding who the contractor is, where they're at in the process. And we'll dive into some of the more details as well. All right, so we'll go back to the situation. So what what is the condition of you know the current property right now in terms of the, um, you know, the build out, what's been done, things of that magnitude? Yeah, so, so far it's really just a subdivision that's Kind of at the curb and gutter undergrounds are all on the, on the site so that part has already been completed um it's kind of where we're at right now okay and then tell me about your business like what do you focus on in the housing sector so we are a production builder doing starter to second homes through arizona colorado and texas and we're also expanding so there might be more markets to come awesome can you tell me about the subdivision? How many homes you're thinking about building? Yeah, we're looking at about 200 homes. That's great. And what's the mix of the types of homes? So a three and four bedroom and two bath, single story, about 8,000 square foot lots. They're all, really, they're all wood and stucco with a little yard. Great. And how many employees do you have right now? There's 25 full-time and 15 part-time. Awesome. And will there be any community amenities at all? Sure. We'll have a uh, community center and a pool. Also, there'll be a tennis court and some pickleball courts. Furthermore, we'll have a trail for people to run on. Awesome. And do you have any business uh, affiliates at all, like other than the businesses that are tied to the existing business or something intertwined? Yes, I do have one other affiliate. We own 25%. It's our land company that we buy the land in. Uh, would you say that your business is pretty cyclical? I could say that, yeah, I suppose. Okay. So let me uh, just talk to the audience here for a minute. Um, so when, when you're dealing with um, this type of questioning around the, the asset itself, you're trying to get the understanding of what this subdivision looks like. You're trying to understand, you know, the lot sizes. You're trying to understand you know, the types of housing and the different unit mix that you're dealing with. Um, and when you're dealing with home builders, 
Sometimes they're just spec builders. They're just going to build them for sale. Sometimes they're custom home builders. Sometimes they're doing townhouses. Um, so you just want to understand what type it is and then who that buyer uh, is that's going to come in uh, when all is said and done. So you're just trying to get a picture of the whole subdivision so that we know what we're working with. So back to the questioning of what the, the collateral that's pledged. Um, are you aware of how the builder line works? I'm not. Okay. So uh, I'll just walk you through that. Um, essentially, the lender provides a line of credit, let's say for $10 million, and takes all the 100 or 200 lots as the collateral. What they do is they'll allow you to build several spec homes at a time and then unlimited pre-sold homes. So the lender allows you to draw 75% against the total cost. Uh, if there is a home that's 250,000, the lender would allow you to draw 187,500 on each home. The interest starts to accrue when you draw and then you build it. Once it's built, then you sell the home and let's say you sold it for $350,000, you would pay down the 187,500 plus the interest accrued, and then they would uh, release the lot. When you sell the home, this would go back to the line of credit. So you now can keep drawing on it through the life of the subdivision. That sounds good. So what happens if we have a loan on the land? Um, well, it's a great question. If you have a loan on the land, they would probably have a loan to pay off for each lot with the line of credit. For example, let's say that you have a loan for $2 million against the 200 lots. Um, they would take the 2 million divided by, you know, the, the 200, or let's just say if it's, if it's 100, well, it'd be 10,000 per lot uh, for the loan. Uh, we'd go to draw the line of credit and we'd pay off the $10,000 loan. So it's free and clear. And the lender now has a first deed of trust on the lot. Okay. What are the terms and rates for something like this? Great question. Usually about 36 months at a time, they're interest only and the rates are usually five to five and a half percent. Uh, they'll lend up to 75% of the total cost and the fee will be anywhere from a half uh, to 1%. Thank you. That makes sense. Okay. So just back to the listener, the lender is going to give um, most attention to the loan to cost because uh, the loan to value could be a lot you know, higher um, and so they'll use the, the value of um, the entitled and improved property that you're dealing with. And so, you know, when you buy a piece of property, you've got unentitled land, um, you know, unimproved land. Sometimes when you're dealing with subdivision uh, builders, they're going to have to entitle it and improve the land. Then they're going to do a subdivision plat with lots. Um, and then they'll eventually start to build the, the vertical homes. Um, so it's just important to understand the general uh, flow uh, when it comes to land. So we're gonna discuss the details about the property location. So where is the property gonna be located? It's located on the Southeast corner of Gilbert Road and Brown in Mesa, Arizona. Great, do you know how much traffic uh, you'll have go by this location? I'm sure it's gonna be important for you know, what you're doing. Yeah, but there's about 30,000 cars a day. And why did you pick this specific location? So it's a perfect area for a demographic buyer who is buying a new home or an upgrade. The land was at the right price and the city was very favorable to the project. Smart, makes sense. And again, just when you're dealing with uh, location, uh, you're dealing with, you know, where's it located in town? Is it in a major subdivision? Is it, um, in a major city or a tertiary market? What's the traffic count? Um, what could hinder it around there? So just trying to understand what could either help or hinder uh, the property when you're dealing with somebody, um, you know, with respect to the location. So we'll go back to cash flow now uh, with the client. Would you mind telling me about how the business did for the last fiscal year um, in terms of the net income? Yeah, I believe the building company made about two million five hundred thousand in net income. Great, and I, I just want to make sure we're talking about net after expenses. Is that still two and a half? Correct. Yes. Okay. Great job. 
Um, how about you personally? How much did you make in income uh, last year? I pay myself about 250 grand a year through the company. Okay, uh, thank you. And do you, do you have any business debts? And if so, um, how much do you pay a month in the payments? We do have about 3 million construction loans and our payment, I believe is around 20,000 a month. Okay, great. And how about personal debts? Do you have any mortgages, auto loans, credit cards, and any payment amounts there? I do have a mortgage for 900,000. I pay $4,500 a month, an auto loan for 80,000 and pay 2,500 a month. That's great, thank you so much. Um, so just note to the listener. So a lot of times a client will not know this stuff off the top of their head. So you'll need to request the appropriate documents. Remember to quickly run some cash flow numbers based upon the potential new loan. And if you recollect, you will do this by running a debt payment on an amortization calculator, um, just based upon the loan to cost that you're gonna be doing uh, for this. And so you're trying to get to a debt service coverage ratio. In a lot of instances, especially when you're dealing with a builder or a developer, they're probably not going to show a lot of cash flow just because they've been running a subdivision that's not making money for years. So don't be surprised uh, if, if you don't. Um, that's fairly uh, normal um, uh, when you're dealing with this. But uh, we do need to understand the tax returns nonetheless, uh, especially for dealing with a conventional lender. So important to understand their, their overall picture. And, I think, and then again, unless you're dealing with a private lender or uh, somebody that's non-bank, uh, if it is bank, you're gonna have to run into this. So we'll go back to urgency. So are you under contract, Jim? No, we already own the land and are ah. running into some deadlines though to hit for getting the home sold. Oh, okay, that makes sense. And again, uh, just pulling back to, to uh, the listener, there's lots of different urgency things, you know, purchase deadlines, mm -hmm. refinance deadlines, cash flow deadlines. And when you're dealing with a builder or developer, at some point when they're into it, they own the land, there's deadlines. Um, they need to get stuff done. They need to sell homes. The interest is accruing. So there's a tremendous amount of urgency, generally speaking, unless they own it free and clear and they're not gonna do it for a long time. There are longer timelines for a developer uh, and a builder. So you just need to understand their urgency might be a little bit different um, because it goes for years. Um, so just, just be cognizant of that. Um, we'll go back to their credit situation. So Jim, how's, how's your credit? Meaning have you ever had any like bankruptcies, foreclosures? Criminal activity, short sales, late pays, you in any lawsuits? Well, I did have a foreclosure on two pieces of land about eight years ago, and I'm in the middle of a minor lawsuit. Happens to a lot of people, so thank you for telling me. Would you mind me asking what the situation was and why it happened? Sure, it was 2009 and everything really stopped. I couldn't get access to the lines of credit and the bank started not to respond. I tried to raise money, but no one wanted to jump into land that was upside down. I worked with the bank for about nine months and we could not come to a conclusion. So we gave it back. It was a rough time and I honestly regret it, but I had to stay alive. In the lawsuit, we have a customer suing us for a bad plumbing system. The attorney said the worst case scenario was about 25,000, but that is highly unlikely. Thank you very much for the detail. Um, would you mind putting together just a half a page sheet explaining what happened, when it happened, why it happened and why it won't happen again. Uh, this will just help the lender get comfortable with your story to mitigate the risk. Yes, I would be happy to do this. Great, so back to the listener. So again, if client has credit issues, uh, the remedy is to have them write a one page letter, half a page letter, uh, what happened, when it happened, why it happened and why it won't happen again. Uh, furthermore, if you need them to give verifying information, supporting the claims because okay, there's a claim that's made, you always want to back it up uh, with supporting information, legal paperwork, documents, a letter from the attorney. Um, you know, if you're dealing with anything, you know, whether it's more of a federal thing, you're probably going to have to get deeper documentation, but it's just important to really not back off of if there's something major, if it's a medical bill or something minor, that's fine. But if you're dealing with major things that happened, that, that will come up. So 
Um, don't don't shove it under the rug. Okay, let's go back to credibility now. So would you mind sharing your background in the space so I can substantiate your expertise in the business? Of course. I've been in the home building business for the last 30 years. I started this company about 10 years ago. I built about 750 homes and stayed alive during the recession. We plan on doubling our business in the next two years. That's great. Can you get me a copy of your resume and put everything in it that you've accomplished in, in the time periods? Sure, of course. Okay, that'll be great. So again, when we're dealing with credibility, back to the listener, um, just think about the competency level. That's really what we're talking about. Yeah, are they competent? Have they done this before? Um, do they have like kind experience uh, to be able to do that? Or are they partnering with somebody that could help them uh, with this? Um, that's a mitigating factor if you're running into an issue to say, you know, let's try to bring somebody in uh, to, to help you get it done. Uh, but it, you really need to hone in because if they're not and you sense that, then the lender's going to sense that as well. And it'll be probably a waste of time. All right, let's go talk about compensation. Um, are you familiar with how we're compensated? I'm not. Okay. So we're a success fee firm that we usually charge 1% of the loan amount, uh, about a minimum of 10,000, depending on the size. We're compensated for identifying the lender, walking through the whole process and just consulting you along the way. And our role is to best represent you to assure that you have a proactive experience. We are typically paid at closing through escrow by the client and can build it into the budget. Okay, that seems fair. What would you say your value proposition is? That's a, that's a great question. So the reason people usually go with us is for the following reasons. We're extremely proactive, walking you through the nuances and you know, ensuring we solve them. Uh, we have access to capital sources that are extremely competitive and would benefit your needs and we're responsive and share your best interests. Okay, great, that makes sense. Awesome. Okay, so back to the listener. J again, it's a tougher discussion, um, but you're just gonna have to get used to talking about money um, because otherwise people will string you along and you'll start to find out that, you know, they're not uh, as above board. So it's another screening tool uh, mm -hmm. as well to make sure someone sees the value and is willing to pay us for it. Again, someone might negotiate, that's okay, but we're just looking for someone that's fair. You know, someone says, well, I cut your fee in half, you know, just because, or I'm shopping to the world. It's just, those are things we're gonna be cognizant of. So let's go back to setting expectations. So I need to get a rate of three and a half percent and I've heard other lenders say this. You know, Jim, I totally understand uh, why you want this. Just note that we're, we just wanna be realistic uh, what we can and can't achieve. And we're going to try to push, but, um, you know, we just, we may or may not happen. Thanks. Also, we need to have 85% loan to cost. Is this something you can do? Um, you want higher leverage. Um, I know you want 85%, um, but I'm just going to tell you that if you do, um, you're going to pay for it. It's probably going to cost you 10 to 12%. So, I don't know if you're okay with that or if it's just uh, something you want us to explore. No, I think we can stick with the conventional banks. Okay, great, fair enough. Uh, I'll get to work. So again, part of your job, if you're listening, is just uh, set realistic expectations. It could be hard, uh, but you've got to build trust. You got to tell people the truth. So just be upfront with people. Don't sugarcoat it. Be candid, but gracious. All right, let's talk about recourse versus recourse. Um, are you aware of what we mean we have to sign a personal guarantee? Yes, but maybe you can elaborate. Yeah, so basically the guarantee is when the lender has the right to pursue you personally, if there's ever any defaults. And so um, if anybody is involved that has 20% or more, um, what's going to happen? That spouse is, you know, unless you have a prenuptial agreement or, or a waiver. Um, if you default the loan, they're going to try to get it back in order. Um, if they can't, they're going to start, you know, the foreclosure process. If they end up foreclosing, they'll take the property back. Um, if the loan is upside down, if the property is upside down and uh, the loan amount is higher than the liquidation value, then they're going to come after you for, for the difference. And so you'll be personally liable for that as a personal guarantee. And so um, it's just important that you understand that when you sign, that's what, what it means. 
that makes sense. makes sense. Okay, good. Again, just back to the listener, recourse is a big deal. Um, and there's, especially with a single family subdivision, there's not a lot of ways around it uh, unless you're doing a private. Uh, if you're doing a private deal, they're still hard, but you're just not getting as much loan to cost as you would. Um, so someone just needs to know they're going to sign personally uh, when they do do this because it's a it's a high risk loan for sure. Okay, so let's vet out the client and their loyalty here for a second. Um, who else are you talking to right now who might be helping you obtain the loan? I'm talking to three other banks who I've worked with in the past. That's great. Uh, is there any reason why you wouldn't just go with them? Because I'm trying to get the best terms for the loan. So I'm looking to see who can offer us those options. Totally understand. Do you know what the other lender has offered? I just want to make sure we can best serve you in getting a competitive quote. Honestly, I just put it out. Haven't gotten any feedback yet. Okay. Thanks. That's helpful. Are you open to working with us exclusively to represent you outside the lenders you're already with? What exactly does that mean? So it means that we will work diligently to get you the best terms, meet your goals, uh, that will represent you through the whole process and that we assure to get your best interest, but um, you'll be ex giving us exclusivity for about 90 days. All right, makes sense. I'm open to that, but need to be, need to see your agreement first before I make that total commitment. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so back to the listener. The key here is to look for the clients who are open to viable opportunities. You wanna refrain from someone who's an incessant shopper, Stay away from someone who isn't going to be transparent about the process. If they have another broker, you want to agree that everybody register their names. Um, otherwise, you're just going to run into a wheel spin. Uh, don't waste your time with, with those situations. And it's a judgment call. You're going to ask your manager or mentor to, to navigate some of these things as you, as you go through. Okay, let's go to the client net worth. Um, do you mind me asking what your net worth is? Yeah, it's about 30 million. Okay, and how much of that is liquid? 1 million or so. That's, that's great. Can you get me a personal financial statement? Sure. Okay, so back to the listener. You, you wanna ask about cash fast because you wanna see if they have it here. And um, again, just remember when you're dealing with a subdivision in construction, net worth and liquidity are a big deal. You know, ideally you want to have 10% of the loan amount. Um, it's not a deal killer, but, uh, but it's something that you want to press into hard because the lender will, will absolutely hammer on that. Um, so just remember to, to keep that top of mind when you're dealing with it. Let's go back to the value of the collateral. What, what do you think the property's worth? The land is probably worth $2,500,000 conservatively. Each house will sell for about three hundred fifty to four hundred thousand dollars. Okay, uh, it'd be really important we understand in advance what we think it'll be worth. And so, back to the listener, just just remember that we're going to need comps. We're going to need to know what the total budget is. Uh, we're going to need for you to really spend some time with the client to make sure you could substantiate the land value price, um, the improved price total budget costs, uh, values, uh, the exit home values, all those things you need to know. If you don't know them, then you're gonna get caught uh, with your pants down, so to speak, right? Like you just need to understand values. And once you do, then either you'll find out, you know, it's not in line, uh, or you'll find out like, I'm prepared to go have a discussion with the lender uh, and to answer those tough questions. So just remember that. Okay, let's go back to phase one. Uh, do you know if uh, you've ever done a phase one on the on the property at all? I did, yes. Okay, great. If if you can get a copy of that, would be fantastic. Okay, so remember, um, phase one, big deal. They're probably going to get it in a subdivision, so I won't be too worried about it because they're just not going to get approvals unless they got a phase one mm -hmm. or geotech report. So um, so that'll be important. Okay, so now, now we're gonna go into the construction development. This is really important uh, that you follow this as best you can because it's, it's, um, it'll save you a lot of time. Okay, uh, do, they already, do you already own the land? Um, yes, I do actually. Okay, great. And when did, you, uh, when did you buy it and how much did you pay? We paid 1.5 million. 
right? And do you remember about how long ago you bought it? Yeah, it was about a year ago. Okay, great. And how much time have you spent in uh, total or how much have you spent in total, I should say, um, on the project? Just about $250,000 and all the fees and reports. Okay, great. Um, and what's the zoning currently? And is there any rezoning that's going to take place? And if so, um, you know, what do you need to do and how long will it take? So there's no need for rezoning. It is zoned residential. Okay, great. Are there any issues with the property, like deed restrictions, encroachments, easements? Just a minor encroachment, but we're working through this. Okay. Um, if you could just get me some information on that, that'd be fantastic. Sure. Have you already done work on the site? And if so, have you cleared this with the local title company for broken priority? We've moved a little bit of dirt. We have also gotten all the waivers from the title company. So we are good there. Great. And just for the listener, that's if they've done anything on the site, uh, you've got to be, it's called broken priority. So you'll need to get um, lien waivers from the title company. That's a really big deal. I will just continue on. Uh, great. Are there any grading issues on the site? Yes, a little, but we have the dirt to level off the site. Awesome. Um, does the site have any historical or natural protection issues? No. Okay. Uh, does any of the land need to be donated to the government? Yes, we had to give half an acre to them for a little park. That's a bummer. Um, have you picked out the contractor? Yes, we're using Callum Contracting. Contracting, sorry. Okay. And who will handle all the operating cash flow shortfalls on the project efforts complete and operating? We will build it in the budget. Okay, that's great. Um, what is the construction budget or development budget? Uh, and have they gone through the exercise of getting bids, you know, for the contractor for 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 the uh, project? I think it will be about twenty five million, give or take. This is a hard bid for now. Okay, great. Um, and what was the original use of the property? Uh, this will just tell us a lot uh, for the lender to determine if there's any risks. I believe it was a farmland use initially. Okay. And how far are you in the development or entitlement process right now? Like, do you have construction plans, architecture drawings, engineering? They should have permits in about two months and have all the plans and drawings almost complete. Great job. Is the property improved with all the utilities stubbed up to the property? And what's the situation with water and... Uh, right now. Yeah, everything's stubbed and they are finishing, they are finished lots. Awesome. And uh, you have any of the reports like ALTA, environmental, geotech, market study, archaeological? Only the ALTA, environmental, almost on the geotech. Okay. And we'll probably need to get a market study from you as well. Sure. Okay. So for the listener, again, just walking through these questions is going to flush a lot of things out. Like, do they own the land? Have they improved the land? How much have they spent? Um, you know, are they where are they at in the city uh, right now getting approvals? Um, so you're trying to just get a picture of all of the improvement stuff for the site. And so it's important to press into that, you know, big time. So let's go to personal questions. Um, is everybody a citizen? Yes, all citizens. Okay. Are you married? And if so, do you realize your spouse have to sign the loan documents? Yes, I'm married. And yes, it's fine. Great. Have you ever defaulted on any federal debt in the past and uh, or not? Nope. Okay. Never. Um, do you have a trust? And if so, are you okay if the trust is a guarantor? Yes, but I'm not okay having it signed. We want that out of the documents. Okay. Um, this will be okay as long as your assets aren't in the trust. We'll have to run this by the lender to confirm. So um, are you... It's kind of silly question to you, but you know everybody's coherent to sign loan documents and. Yes, okay. everyone's good. Great, no back taxes owned the IRS. Nope. Okay. Again, just going back to the listener, you're trying to really figure out these questions because they could pose problems. You know things like you know somebody going through divorce or, um, you know, uh, all those little nuances that we ask to make sure that we're going to move forward in a clear fashion. So this is uh, the questionnaire, this is the scenario for a, you know, again, a single family subdivision uh, for 200 lots, 25 million. And I think this will be helpful uh, as you're trying to figure out how to navigate uh, the application, application and the mining questions.